I live in a small country town just about an hour away from Chicago. I've lived there my entire life, and in the 23 years I've lived here, nothing has changed. No new buildings, not new townsfolk. Nothing has changed. Well, except for one thing. There was once an empty corner store that no shop was in for years. And one day, my girlfriend and I, uh, my girlfriend's name, Maria, um, we were sharing a beer behind the drugstore. I stole it from my house when we saw that there was a moving truck in front. Um, after we finished and hid the beer bottle, we went to go see what was happening. It turns out that there was a pizza shop being set up. Whew. I was excited to see that there was going to be something new in the town. Finally, something new for everyone to enjoy. Hey, who doesn't like pizza? You have to understand that when I was a kid, I, I thought my hometown was ex it was ex as exciting as paper. So when this new pizza joint was announced, I was as happy as a kid in a candy shop. Uh, there's just one little problem. I lied. I, I'm not a fan of pizza. Yeah, I know. I, I know that probably means I'm a hell spawn or something, but I'm sorry. It's not my thing. However, my girlfriend loves pizza more than life itself. So, naturally, I knew we'd have to go there when it opened. And the odd thing was that it took surprisingly long to open. I'm not sure why, but it opened about four months after the moving van rolled into town. But sure enough, it did happen. The night Marie and I went to the pizza parlor, I had something to eat before we went there. Like I said, I, I don't eat pizza, so I had a small sandwich about a half hour prior to us going there. Uh, and I know this sounds funny, but it possibly ended up saving my life. <sighs> well, uh, sadly, I uh, can't say the same for Maria. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, uh, I, I should have protected Maria more. I mean, let me just tell you the story. Uh, Mar Maria and I walked to the parlor. I, I could tell she was hungry. Maria was... Uh, is... was... Uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. A little heavy set, but it doesn't bother her or me at, at all. I'm going to have a whole pie. Jesus, I'm starving, she was yelling at me. An entire pie, I said. Don't eat too much or you could get sick. I said that to her as I moved my arm around her. She laughed. Her flaming red hair leaned against my neck. Don't worry, hon. I'll be okay. We arrived at the parlor and the sign read, Red Pumpkin Pizza, and they were open. Uh, oddly enough, nobody was inside. We walked in to see there were four booths on the left and right, a, a black and white checkered floor, and a counter toward the back that all types of pizza you could think of. Uh, however, only one man was at the counter. He was tall, long arms... <sighs> arms and fingers were long and thin. And he had a, a short, white beard. He had a smug grin of confidence on his face. Come on in, friends. Welcome to RPP, Red Pumpkin Pizza. Maria walked up to him while I got us a seat in the booth. <sighs> what can I get you, Firefly? The old man said with a smile, showing his yellow teeth. Oh, his breath smelled awful. It must have been a smoker. Maria looked over the menu, thought for a minute, and said, I'll have a small pepperoni pizza, please. The man looked puzzled. Small? That ain't going to be enough for the two of you. Oh, no. It's just for me. My boyfriend doesn't eat pizza. The man looked right at me with a look only a man with a plan could make. Under his breath, he said, Don't eat pizza. He looked back to Maria and said, Sure. I'll be back in a minute. He turned and walked him back before Maria could even pull out her money. Hey, how much for the pie? Maria asked. No response. 
Maria was now quite confused. She left the, a 10 on the counter and took a seat across from me at the booth. Shortly after, the pizza was placed on the table. Enjoy, little missy, he said with a smile as he placed the frisbee-sized pizza on the table. Maria looked up and said, Did you get the money I placed on the counter? Oh, yes I did. Thank you very much, he said, and, and he walked away quickly into the back. So we were alone, just Maria and me and the pizza. Maria didn't delay as she began to stuff her face with the pepperoni pizza, and all I could do was sit and watch. I wasn't hungry, and watching Maria eat it, it made me want it even less. Sooner than later, Maria finished the pie, and she, she looked happy about it. How was it, dear? I asked lovingly. Maria smiled, and before she could say anything, a, a low rumble was heard from below the table. We paused. It sounded almost unnatural, to say the least. Maria looked down under the table to see if there was anything under the table, but there was nothing. We looked at each other and then around, but again, we ended up finding nothing. Just before I was going to say that was weird, we heard it again, but this time it was a little louder and we could tell where it came from. Maria's stomach. Maria looked down at her belly, placed a hand on it. Strangely, it was warm and was growling in the same strange way, like some sort of intense hunger pang, even though she just ate a pizza. Oh, man. Sorry. The shit hit the fan after that. Maria's stomach began to expand. It could be heard throughout the empty room. The sound of skin stretching and her now-growing belly becoming larger and larger. Oh my god, help me! She was beginning to panic, and so was I. I, I jumped out of my seat and began to pull Maria out. She was much heavier due to her expanding stomach. Luckily, she was able to be pulled out of the seat. Her stomach was growing bigger. It was the size of a basketball. It, it popped the buttons on her shirt. Oh, she began to scream. The blood veins in her stomach began to show. She was stretching so fast, so big, sharply. Uh, she began to cough up blood all over her flannel shirt and skin. And still she began to grow. Oh, man, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I ran to the back to see if the man was there. He was missing, nowhere in sight. I heard Maria scream again. I rushed to her to help, even though there was nothing I could do. When I got back to the main area, her belly was all red with stretch marks and blood stains. She looked at me for a second before her belly exploded. Her belly busted open, thronging her swollen organs everywhere. I was covered in blood and half-digested food. All that was left of Maria was her upper torso and her face frozen in fear and pain. It's been five years since the event took place. The more I think about it, the less it makes sense. Where did that man go? Why set up a shop that took oh, for months to do and then cut town? Why were we the only ones there? Behind the shop was a corn patch. If he left that way, why was there no broken corn stalks? Why? Why? <laughs> That's like... <sighs> yeah. 
you know what's amazing is uh, I was never blamed for Maria's death even though we were the only ones there not by the police not by her parents so uh, her parents knew how much I loved her the autopsy confirmed that there was a growing herb inside Maria's stomach that caused her to swell I, I, I don't know if there's ever been another case like it I don't care The events played in my nightmares over and over again for years. I feel helpless each and every single time because I know what's going to happen. Sometimes I... My nightmares, it's from Maria's view, sometimes from my view, but slower. Forcing me to see her belly rip open and sound her guts everywhere. Like I said before,